Growing citrus has been hands down one of the most fun experiences of my entire 10 years caring for houseplants. It has sparked so much curiosity. I have learned so much on these amazing plants. And who doesn't want to grow their own lemons or limes or ingredients to make the cocktail or mocktail of their dream in their living room? You can grow citrus indoors, and we are going to talk all about how to do it today. So welcome. Growing joy. Welcome to Growing Joy. I'm Maria, your best plant friend, and I am here to help you care for plants successfully and grow joy in your life by doing so. And today... We're talking about citrus. I'm so excited to have this whole video about citrus care in partnership with Via Citrus, who shipped me these amazing plants and Espoma Organic, my go-to citrus fertilizer, potting mix, all of it. So citrus has a really special place in my heart. If you have followed me for a while, you will know this. If you've listened to my podcast, Growing Joy with Plants, you will also know this. But citrus was one of my first house plants. I cared for citrus indoors in the first year of caring for plants, and I had a bear's lime tree. I got him. His name is Limey. Limey, my lime tree. Um, I got him in the clearance section of a garden center. I brought him home. I had no idea how to care for him. And I learned so many lessons the hard way (laughs) for how to care for citrus indoors. I did a lot of things wrong in my first, I'd say, six to eight months with caring for Limey. So I'm so excited to put this video together to teach you to learn from my mistakes. Learn from my mistakes and care for citrus successfully and make your own cocktails with the lemons and limes that you grow in your house. You can grow lemons and limes in your house if you have a few key elements, which I'm going to talk to you about. And if you want to see Limey, stay tuned. I'm going to show him to you at the end of this episode and talk to you about my entire journey with caring for Limey. But today we're going to talk about beautiful, fresh, citrus trees from Via Citrus. I have used Via Citrus multiple times. They ship plants, amazing citrus plants grown in Florida directly to your home. They arrive in these boxes. I thought it would be fun to do an unboxing of one and then we'll skip. I have four trees to talk about today, different varieties of citrus. So they come in a box like this and then I'm going to put the box on the ground and they have this cute little sleeve. And lo and behold, here's our citrus plant. (gasps) Oh, and we have blossoms. I think the multiple of these have blossoms, I'm pretty sure Danny told me. So you take them out like this, and boom, you have a citrus plant. I've ordered from Via Citrus multiple times, and I've had a great experience with them. We have four different types of citrus that I want to show you, so let me go ahead and unbox these off camera, and we'll get to the care in a minute. Look at that! We've got four citrus trees now! I cannot believe it. I'm so excited. So Via Citrus sent us a lemon, which has, it. the lemon is like in full bloom. I'm so excited. The flowers smell so incredible. The reason why you should have citrus is because the bloom smells so good. It doesn't even matter if they develop into fruit. Having this scent in your home is exquisite. When my lime tree would be in bloom in my apartment in New York City, I lived in 500 square feet. It was the greatest. It was so good. So we have a lemon. We have a calamondin tree over here. Oh, no. This is a calamondin tree. A calamondin is very similar to a lemon or a lime. It's a citrus that's bitter. You can put it in jams. You could put it in um, cocktails, but you're not going to eat it like a normal orange. You're going to use it kind of to enhance as like a sour flavor. But apparently these, I've never grown a calamondin, but apparently they do really well indoors. They're like a great kind of beginner citrus plant. If you listened to the episode on my podcast where I interviewed the founder of Via Citrus, Danny, who's a plant friend of mine, you will know that I have desired a blood orange tree forever. Growing citrus in pots was really popular throughout the ages in Italy. I'm Italian. I feel like when I grow citrus, it connects me to my Italian roots. But anyway, blood oranges, Sicilian blood oranges is a big thing. I told Danny about that and he actually sent me a blood orange citrus tree. I cannot believe I have one of these. I'm so excited to grow it at my mom's house in Florida. It's going to be amazing. And then we have a Persian lime. These are great limes as well. You can literally grow limes or lemons in your living room. It's incredible. It's so much fun to be able to harvest the lime and make a mojito or put it in your water um, to drink throughout the day. And these blossoms smell incredible as well. All right, so let's talk about citrus care while I actually pot up these citrus because the pots and the, the soil, the potting mix that you're potting them up in, 
really make a difference for setting their plants up for success, right? Because we all want to get blooms, but we want those blooms to actually turn into the citrus fruit so that you can be harvesting and making your own cocktails. What a flex to show up to a party or to host a party and be like, oh yeah, I grew these citrus in my living room that the cocktails are, you know, created with. I think that's a real flex. I have done that and I'm not afraid to share that with you. Okay. Citrus. They like arid environments. They like a lot of sun. If you think about it, we're shooting this video in Florida, the sunshine state. They want to just be basking in the sun because they need a lot of light to generate photosynthesis, to generate their food, to support the blooms. So with citrus, if you're growing them indoors, light is going to be the biggest issue because they get so much light outside. It's very hard to replicate the volume of light that they get outside indoors. So if you have citrus, you really need to get them six to eight hours of direct light, either in a southern facing windowsill if you're in the northern hemisphere or under a grow light. I grow my citrus under the Soltech aspect hanging light, the 40 watt one, and I put the light pretty close to the citrus plant. You have to make sure you have the appropriate amount of space for a light. You don't wanna hang the light too high up or the plant isn't gonna get the right amount of volume of light. So just whatever grow light you get, make sure that you read the instructions to understand this is a highlight plant. So you've gotta put it in that highlight area. So let's begin with the Calamondin. Um, I like this plant as a demo because you can see these beautifully healthy roots. As you can see, this plant came in a very chunky soil. There's bark. There's all sorts of stuff. These roots have a lot of an ability to breathe. We definitely need to bump this plant up because you can see that the roots are really established. I'm going to plant this plant up in a terracotta pot. I really like planting my citrus in a terracotta pot. Terracotta in general allows for some course correction if you overwater a plant. So terracotta is a porous material. It absorbs water. So if you end up overwatering a citrus, they don't like wet feet. The terracotta can kind of help you there. I'm going to use a Spoma organic cactus mix to pot up the plant because the cactus mix is also designed for succulents and citrus. So plants that need fast drainage Citrus do not want their roots to sit in water. The roots will rot and die and you will have a very sad, if not dead, citrus plant. You want fast draining soil, which is why you can see that this plant has a lot of bark. You can tell that the soil is like very fast draining. I love that it arrived damp. It's not too dry. So I'm going to use the cactus mix to pop the puppy up. Limey has been in a Spoma cactus mix. All my succulents are also in a Spoma cactus mix. I absolutely love it. So when you're planting up citrus, you want to, you don't want to plant it too deep. So I'm going to shoot to plant it up to the top because these roots are exposed. I'm going to cover it just a little bit, um, but you, I'm going to plan to sit this plant in the pot like this and have the soil come up to about an inch under the lip so that when I give it a good water, the water can kind of fill up and then drain. So I'm going to start by putting a little bit of soil in the bottom. And then we're going to kind of work our way into supporting the roots. So we've got a nice base of soil in the bottom. And now I'm going to kind of play around with figuring out how much soil I need to get the top of the potted plant to sit where I want it. So I'm going to add a little bit more soil. I'm calling it soil, but you should really call it, call it potting mix. Soil is what you find outside. Potting mix is sterile. Definitely plant your plants in potting mix. Don't take the soil from your garden and, and pot your any plants, but especially your citrus. And while I'm filling this up, I do want to say special thanks to Espoma, the part, one of the partners of this episode. I love their citrus tone fertilizer. I love their cactus mix for citrus. They make amazing products. You can also use their bloom and grow fertilizers on your citrus if you want. They're an amazing family owned and operated company. Love you, Espoma. So we're just gonna move this around and backfill. Now, when you're potting up any type of plant, but particularly citrus, you want to make sure that you're kind of pressing the soil down so that it's like really supportive because when you water the, when you water it, the soil is going to kind of compact. I'm being pretty firm when I'm potting this up and I'm making sure that the sides are getting all of the soil they need. Okay, this looks pretty good to me. Now, next stop would be to thoroughly drench this plant. So I would give a huge drink of water to this plant 
let kind of the water probably come up to the lip of the pot and then let it drain down. The water is going to help the roots settle in its new soil. You always want to pot your plants, your citrus plants in a pot with holes in it so that when the water runs through the soil, it can come out the bottom of the pot. So when you have pots with drainage holes, you're going to put it in the saucer, water the plant, let the water drain into the saucer. I leave the water in the saucer for about an hour because sometimes the plant will reabsorb it through capillary action. And there you go. In terms of watering, citrus don't like wet feet, so they don't want to be overwatered. They like a little bit, to, they like to dry out just a little bit. So I usually let like the soil dry out to my first or second knuckle if I put my finger in, in the soil, let it dry out a little bit and then give it a big water. So with citrus, you're going to water thoroughly, but not frequently. Because if you think about it, where they're living outdoors, they're going to get big rainstorms and then they're going to dry out, get a big rainstorm and dry out. You don't want to let the full pot dry out, just the top layer of soil and then give another really good drink and then you're done. In terms of fertilizing, I love this product, uh, Citrus Tone by Espoma Organic. It's granular and basically you sprinkle some of the granules on top of the soil and then every time you water the plant, that the grain, uh, the grains, the granular pieces, <laughs> I guess, fertilize the soil through the water. A couple of tips with this product. It does have a bit of a scent. So just heads up. I use it indoors. Some people prefer to only use it in their outdoor, in their outdoor citrus. You can also use Espoma Organics Grow or Bloom Liquid Solution. We have the Bloom, solu the Bloom one when your plant is blossoming is good. Um, or the grow comes in a, in a green bottle. I don't mind the scent. It goes away like within the first day and also always use a glove. So I use a rubber glove. I actually keep a rubber glove in the citrus tone bag for whenever I'm taking it out and sprinkling a little bit. You can follow the directions on the bag or you can just kind of go rogue the way I do and just like give a little bit of a sprinkle, a little bit of love. Whenever the plant has any blooms, you want to make sure that you are fertilizing, especially too in the spring when it's ready to blossom, fertilize, right? The plant needs a lot of nutrition to support the blooms and the development of the fruit. A lot of people ask about pruning when it comes to citrus care. I love these pruners by Modern Sprout. They're so cute. This thing makes it really helpful to get a grab. You're going to prune in the beginning of spring before it leafs out and gets buds. I never recommend pruning more than a third of the plant, but it's really helpful to prune the plant. What happens is when you prune a plant, it triggers a hormone called auxin that runs up and down the stem. When auxin gets triggered, it's going to trigger more bushy lateral growth, right? And that's what you want. You want a nice, bushy, robust citrus plant. So pruning, you got to prune the plant back to inspire more growth. More growth means more blooms, means more citrus, means more cocktails. So there you go. So if I don't want to prune this plant right now, I wouldn't advise pruning a plant the minute after you repot it. It needs a little bit of time to establish itself in your home. It just went through a big upgrade. It traveled to you in the mail or it came home with you from the garden center. You're potting it up in a new pot that's a little bit bigger. Like Give her a minute. Give him a minute to hang, right, and get established. Um, but in a couple of weeks, once he's established, I would prune like maybe here, like a third of the stem and a third of the plant is kind of the good rule of thumb with, with pruning. So let's talk troubleshooting with citrus. As a citrus owner, the three main things that I've dealt with have been spider mites, pests, leaf drop, and leaf curl. And this is what I've learned. Most of the solution to citrus with growing them indoors is light. You probably need more light than you're thinking. So with me, because I have my citrus under a grow light, I had to extend the amount of time that the grow light is on and or lower the grow light or heighten the grow light based off of it. It was a whole year of experimentation with me in my, in my lime tree. So in general, if your citrus is struggling, I'm always going to encourage you to probably experiment with giving it a little bit more light and or a little bit more water. So if you have leaf curl, that's the plant literally like shuddering because it's not feeling well. So leaf curl could be from too much light or it could be from too little water. So there's, it, the plant is like curling and like protecting itself, right? Leaf drop, it's very normal when you bring a citrus home and it's uh, establishing itself in your home. It's very normal for there to be a little bit of leaf drop. So I wouldn't be too worried if your citrus loses a bunch of leaves when it's establishing in your home, but then you're going to want to watch it. And with leaf drop, what I've found is I either had spider mites or I wasn't giving it enough light. Then spider mites. Listen, 
Citrus and Doors is an amazing thing. I highly recommend it. It is so fun. Like I said, just to have the scent of the blossoms in your home, it is totally worth it. But citrus really can be vectors for pests indoors. They're not meant to be indoor plants, right? They're meant to be outside, like singing and singing and dancing in the rain and the sun. So they will attract occasionally spider mites or scale. So the key is, but really, if you're a plant parent, Pests are part of plant parenthood. It's really not if you're going to get pests, it's when. So that's why we made the whole video on your DIY houseplant first aid kit, because it's going to happen. And it's really just about being prepared. So I have products like this available at all times. Neem oil, bioprotectant, fungicide if there's you know a fungal attack. This brand is Arbor. I've just started experimenting with them. They have an insecticide and a fungicide. You put it, you mix this with water, you spray down your plant with it, and it will help eliminate pests. Whatever pest control you like to use, I just highly suggest having it available so that when you see the first sign of pests, you can treat it immediately because especially with citrus or really any houseplants, Pests will really go for it. They will expand and multiply very fast. So it's really good to get them under control as soon as possible. So have some sort of pest protectant on hand. I also really do like the neem oil just also for keeping the leaves clean. Any type of neem oil will do. And with pest prevention, you're going to want to make sure that you're checking the leaf. So make sure when you're looking at your, when, when you water your citrus once a week, you know, a couple of times a week, whatever that looks like for you in your home, I'm always going to check under the leaves. I'm going to check where the leaf attaches to the stem. If you see spider webs in between the leaf and the stem, that likely is an indicator of spider mites. Pests like to hide under the leaves, in between, and maybe even on top of the leaves. So, you know, keeping a mindful interaction with your plant and the leaves is good for your mind, good for your sense of calm, but also really good for pest management. Maybe the most heart-wrenching experience for a citrus owner is for you to have a plant that gives a lot of blossoms and then some of the blossoms fall off. Listen, the plant plant kind of knows how much fruit it can support. So it's going to put off a lot of blossoms. And most of those blossoms aren't going to turn into fruit if you're growing citrus indoors. The plant just can't sustain that. You're really only going to get like a couple of fruits per season. Don't expect if you're if your plant has 100 blossoms on it, that you're going to have 100 lemon or limes indoors, maybe outside, but not inside. You just can't give the plant enough light. So blossom drop is expected. Don't be stressed. You're doing great. You're a great plant parent. And also you still have that blossom to smell, right? So keep it on your desk. Enjoy it in your morning meditation, right? Enjoy the scent of the blossom, maybe even dry it and have it in a potpourri or something. I don't know. Live your best life. Um, But don't be too worried about blossom drop. Normally with my citrus plants, you'll get, you know, a ton of blossoms and then, you know, per stem and then only one or two of the flowers will stay, a bunch of them will drop. And then those two flowers will have more energy from the plant to develop into juicy, delicious fruit. Okay, let's see Limey. So this is Limey, my plant baby. I really do feel like he's a child of mine. I have cried over this guy, right? Who cries over their houseplants? I do. You know what? Tell me in the comments if you've ever cried over your houseplant or citrus plant or garden. It would make me feel better. So, you know, I'm showing you Limey because obviously Limey looks kind of wacky. Like Limey is a crazy guy. He's not your traditional, really big, robust citrus plant, but I have learned so much on him. I learned how to prune on Limey. It was the first time I pruned something something back. And I learned that if you prune a plant, more growth will come, right? I harvested multiple limes that I made drinks from. I learned about pest control on him. I learned about watering. I learned so many things from this plant. And although he looks kind of crazy, I'm so thankful to him. He lives with my mom now. If you watch, I believe we have a YouTube video about this, but I definitely have a podcast. I literally flew him on a plane from New York to Florida because he wasn't getting enough light in our very dark home. And it was a whole story. We couldn't do girl lights, blah, blah, blah. And he's been very happy in Florida living in my mom's lanai. Um, He's given us multiple rounds of limes. I think my mom recently just pruned him back. The reason why I'm showing you limey is citrus are a wonderful way to learn. It can be ups and downs, right? You're going to have, you know, pests, you're going to have things, but they're so much fun. They're such a rewarding plant. I've loved my journey with limey. And I hope that you have your own journey with your own citrus plants. We have discount codes for Via Citrus. Thank you so much to our partners, Via Citrus and Espoma Organic. I absolutely love these citrus plants. 
I am so excited to try my blood orange. Via Citrus is a family company that they're citrus growers in Florida. That's all they do. So the plants always arrive in amazing condition. We have so much new growth. I love it. We have so many blooms. I love that I can immediately start smelling the plants now. You know, I'm talking a lot about these partners, but I've been using them forever on my citrus. I really do. You know, they're they're literally made. The cactus mix is made for citrus plants, right? The citrus stone is made. It's citrus for fertilizer. These growers are only citrus growers. So these are amazing companies. If you're interested in trying citrus for yourself, do it with companies that really know what they're doing, get really good products. And we have links and coupon codes and stuff all in the show notes. Speaking of pointing down here, like all the other YouTubers I see, please make sure that you like and subscribe and thumbs up and, you know, do all the things that tell the YouTube gods that this content is good. And also I would love to hear what you think about citrus care. Do you care for citrus indoors? Are you trying citrus? What type of citrus are you going to try? And if I missed any tips, I would love to know what tips have worked for you for growing citrus inside. Please put them in the comments below. The thing that I love about citrus, especially growing them indoors, it's an opportunity to cultivate curiosity, right? As adults, we don't get to be curious and stand in awe of stuff the way we used to as kids. And I think citrus are a really fun way to be a student again and a really fun way to keep growing joy.